Uh, good morning, folks. Welcome back to another one of my virtual birding tours. This is my, we're back in, we in South Africa and we're back in the Kruger National Park and we're going to be in Northern Kruger Park. So just a recap, I've done uh, three birding virtual tours on, on the world famous Kruger National Park. I did Southern Kruger, Central Kruger, and then now this one up in the north. So this one we're starting up at the camp of Shingweti and heading up towards Punda Maria and Pufuri. Now, Northern Kruger is probably um, offers some of the best birding we can find within the Kruger National Park and even some of our best birding in South and Southern Africa. We've got some real special birds. This being, I mean, you can see a uh, mile, the orange teddy bear, the pelts fishing owl, that being one of the target birds, much more common up in the north. You heard me in the central one tell you how we do see them in Ulifans. And then this bird is uh, most famous coming from the Luvuvu Bridge, Luvuvu area, and up in the Makuleke Concession. But um, the north has got the exam. I mean, some of them have got some really exciting birds. Some of our tropical birds just, just touching in northern Kruger. And it's the only place in South Africa you can really see them. Things like your racketail roller, much more common up in, in Zimbabwe. Uh, we get them on our trips up in the Caprivi, up in Namibia, going towards um, Big Falls in Zambia. But um, there are a couple of spots for racketail roller in northern Kruger. Things like on its chat. Uh, if you're very, very lucky, Dickinson's Kestrel, um, Eastern Nikita is resident in Punta Maria Camp. So there's some really, Kruger's got the north is where all the birders, when you talk about Kruger, the north, furry picnic spot, these kind of things. That's what, that's what people think of. That's what comes to mind. So yeah, uh, Kruger, just a, a recap. You've heard in a couple of other tours. If it's your first time, then just have a look at my YouTube channel, Mark Rainier, and you'll see some of my other tours are on there. I've done these tours. I've done a tour on India, Costa Rica. I'm going to be doing one on Spain, one in Namibia. I'm just doing these birding virtual tours. I'm a professional bird guide working for Nature Travel Birding and our sister company, Nature Travel Kruger. And um, during this madness with the COVID, we're unable to travel and therefore guide. I'm just doing these virtual tours for people to enjoy and um, give us all something to do, get us excited for when we can get out there again and if you've really enjoyed these tours and would like to make some form of donation towards me, please, I'll be most appreciative. It just helps me with uh, earning a bit of an income. So a little bit about Kruger. The entire park is 2.2 million hectares in size. That's about the size of Wales, Israel, or the state of Mississippi. So it's a massive, massive park. A lot of different uh, biodiversity within the park. I mean, it's incredible. We've got over 500 species of birds that have been, have been found in the Kruger Park and over 150 species of mammals. So you can, yeah, it's a very, very, it's an incredible park. You've got a lot of habitat in the park. You've got your acacia dominated bushveld. You've got your open grasslands or mainly central Kruger and then on the foothills of the Limbombos. You've got riverine forests along our main rivers. You'll see some of the pictures when we're up in the Lovuvu River and even the Shingwetsi River. You've got the Pretorius Corp Sauerfeld and then you've got your Mapuni, the Mapani woodland in the north. It's in this Mapani woodland that we're going to be looking for some of the special birds like the Arnott's Chat. So, I mean, some of the other great birds I've known from, from Northern Kruger, things like your crowned eagle, white-breasted cuckoo shrike, Mahoney Loop. I mean, that's the only place in the park you can see, and that's a tough bird to see anywhere. More common, again, in the Caprivi Strip, and then as you head up more north towards East Africa. It's a great bird to see in South Africa, and an even better bird to have on your Kruger list, uh, Retz's Helmet Shrike, your round neck parrots, bronze winged corsa, bushveld pippet, black-throated wattle-eye. Best place I know of is in the Pafuri picnic site. I mean, that's, it's a legendary site amongst birders in South Africa. And then whenever we take our international birders there, it's just an incredible place to spend some time birding on the, on the Levuvu River. Ah, green twin spot, yellow-breasted canaries, uh, just before the Levuvu Bridge, and then at uh, incredible Crook's Corner. Bearded Scrub Robin and Punta Maria Rest Camp, Dusky Log. Of course, everyone knows the Levuvu Bridge. When we say Levuvu Bridge, apart from tails fishing out, we need to look up for the spine tails. Bomb spine tail, mottled spine tail. Of course, in the picnic site and all around Northern Kruger, tropical bobo becomes quite a common bird. So grab your coffee. I've got mine and uh, enjoy, folks. Cheers. Thanks for joining. Just the maps of Kruger. I've done them on all the tours. That is Southern Kruger. So if you look at the, the first tour I did on Southern Kruger, we covered the, the southern area, starting there at Malalan near Bergendal, Lower Sabi, and then up to Skakuza. 
and then, and then now my central burning tour, we headed up to Satara, up to Olifants, and then up to Shingreti. So you can see Mopani, Shingreti, Mopani, I spoke about beautiful area, the Mopani woodland, open grass plains, Tropic of Capricorn Loop, and then we stopped at Shingreti, and now we're going to be doing this turn all the way up here in the north. So heading from Shingreti up towards Punta Maria, and then up to the far north to the Furi border. Just to give an idea on that, that you can see the whole length of the Kruger Park. So where we are, we're on the eastern side of South Africa. Kruger Park is bordered by Mozambique on the, on the east. And in the west, it's got a lot of our private game reserves, the Timbavati, the Sabi Sands, Kaseri, Polule, etc. Then up in the north, it is bordered by Zimbabwe. You can cross into Mozambique in two places, at Giriondo, there near Mopani, then up at the Pafuri border in the north. The Limpopo River is the boundary of northern Kruger. You'll see when we're at Crook's Corner, you look into the Limpopo River. The other side of the Limpopo River is Zimbabwe. And then just a little bit to the east, we've got Mozambique. Here we go. This is our, our point of call where we're starting. This is the Shingwetsi River, and we're standing on the bridge over the Shingwetsi River. So you, the Shingwetsi River, it's a, um, this photo would have been taken in winter. Because there's not that much water in it. The locals won't know how this river flooded in 2011. So this river can become a flowing torrent of water and it really is quite something to, to see. And, and most of Shingwetsi camp was actually um, washed away during that flood. So it, uh, there it look, doesn't look like much, but this can be a very uh, powerful river. And you know, I always tell people in nature, we never mess with water, never mess with fire. It's just the camp, sunset at the camp. This was taken from the restaurant while enjoying a, a nice cold beverage or a nice cold beer after a good day's birding. And you can see just a spectacular sunset. You can hear the birds going to sleep and some of our nocturnal birds waking up. Things like your fiery neck night jar, always listening for pals fishing owl. actually has been recorded and at Shingwetsi before. Some of the other owl, giant eagle owl, barn owl, spotted eagle owl, etc. And that's, still, that's how it looks during the day. So the camp has got some exceptionally great birding as because the river runs in front of the camp. So within the camp throughout the day, you'll have yellow-billed stalk, you'll have marabou stalk, saddle-billed stalks. In summer, it's really good for some of our migrant waders, the sandpipers, marsh sandpiper. Always keep a look. I've had terns flying over there before. Good bushveld birding, you know, African green parrots, the brown-necked parrots, brown-headed parrots come down here your hornbills, kingfishers. Uh, it camp's quite good for woodpecker, especially Bennett's woodpecker. Camp's also good for some of the smaller birds, you know, African firefinch, red-billed firefinch, um, green ring pytelia, that sort of thing. So it's a great camp to spend some time birding in as well. So we're going to start our birding. One of the more common birds we see throughout the Kruger Park and common in Shingweta camp, your southern yellow-billed hornbill. Hornbills, it's a very, very big family. It's a family we found in Africa and then we find in Asia. Asia is quite, am quite amazing. You get some of the really, really big hornbills found in Asia. And our tours that we spend time in Asia, we're always targeting some of those great hornbills. And then our tours in Africa in the tropics, Uganda, Rwanda, parts of um, Ghana, switching, going across to West Africa, you get some of the very, very big hornbills. Your cast hornbills, your black and white hornbills. Just absolutely incredible hornbills. Our only real big hornbill we have in Southern Africa is our trumpeter hornbill. The hornbills are a very unique family of birds in the way that they nest. They all will make look for a hole in, the, in a tree and they'll nest in the hole. The female will go into that hole, lay the eggs, and during that entire incubation period, the male will look after her. He'll come up to the nest and he'll feed her while she's sitting on the eggs. She actually will go and seal up the hole and just leave a small little opening at the top which she feeds her through. So they, they, they're quite unique birds. Kruger, the park, um, Kruger's got some great diversity. We've got this guy, the yellow bird. We get the red bird. You get your crown and you get your trumpeter. And then, of course, the charismatic southern ground um, hornbill. When we spend time in Uganda, in East Africa, especially Kenya, that's when we're looking for your Abyssinian or your northern ground hornbill. And then, um, yeah, as you heard me say, when you spend time in the tropics or time in Asia, then we're targeting a whole bunch of different hornbills. You know, one of the other birds that is, uh, starts to become a bit more common as we explore northern uh, Kruger, this is a Cameroptera, and this is a grey-backed Cameroptera. The one we find in southern Kruger is green-backed Cameroptera, and from the north we get grey-backed Cameroptera. I'm just going to play the call for you because I always say it's got quite a unique call. It sounds like someone shooting a... We call it a camera operator. It sounds like someone with a big lens 
shooting photos away. I'm just gonna pick me, here we go. You can see very, very unique call. You can actually hear when that, when that was recorded, you can actually hear the elephants vocalizing in the background too. One of the other common birds we have in red that's common in front of Shingretzi camp in the river there from the restaurant and on that walk is red-faced cysticula. It's a cysticula you mainly, find, you mainly find along your rivers and it's also got quite a unique call. So when you spend time along our, oh sorry, I'm jumping here, sorry. Yeah. When you spend time along our, no, our rivers in the northern parts of the park, um, or even in the south, I mean, it's the, the lower Savi, um, in front of the Savi River, you get them there, you listen to that call and look in the reeds and you often find red faced sticklia. This is a cutthroat finch. Cutthroat finch is also a bird that is um, regular in Shinguetsi rest camp. So if you walk around the camp, especially in the front of the camp near the shop area, near the ponds, you look around that area often you'll come across these beautiful finches you can see that, that why where the name cutthroat finch comes from and then you heard me say how bennett's woodpecker is quite common in the camp as well this was actually taken in from great serious camp in the camping area the camp is quite good for other woodpeckers i mean bearded woodpecker golden-tailed woodpecker and even cardinal woodpecker is in the camp as well as you heard me say, with all of Kruger's camps, it's well worth spending some time actually birding in the camps and birding around the camps because our camps have got exceptionally good birding in them. The birds are quite often used to people, so it offers a great chance to get some really good photos of the birds and um, just to get familiar with some of the more common birds. I mean, it's always, always good spending time and getting to know the birds that are quite common in some of the camps and the, some of the picnic spots. Another bird that is also common in uh, Shinguetsi in our summer areas is your, or across the whole park, is your woodlands kingfisher. What's really amazing with this bird is that um, these birds are migrants, they're inter African migrants. They come down to South Africa to breed. So they'll come down into Southern Africa to breed in our summer months. And then now in winter, they head back up into Central Africa. So they always, it's all of our, always our colorful visitors that are here for our summer. Okay, heading out of Shingretzi and then heading down along the Shingretzi River towards uh, the bird hide and then all the way along that river, you, it's really, really good for water birds because you're going to be along the river the whole time. And if you scan and you're watching and sometimes you're very lucky, even on the causeway in front of the camp, if you go out the back entrance of the camp, you can find things like this. This is a female, uh, sorry, a male greater painted snipe. It is always a special bird and always a fantastic bird to see within the Kruger National Park. And in the Shingwetsi area, along the Shingwetsi um, River, I always seem to, uh, it's quite, quite often a really good area to, to keep your eye out for painted snipe. Even from the camp, if you've got a spotting scope, it's worth just scanning the little pools, looking for these guys hanging around. It's not always we get them <laughs> so nicely like this, out and about and in the open. Other birds that are relatively common uh, in the Shingwetsi area, you heard me say often in front of the camp, we have these, um, Saddlebull stalks, sorry, these marabou stalks, saddlebull stalks as well, but these marabou stalks in front of the river or up in the trees like this. And they, um, they're not the, definitely not the best looking bird in, in Kruger Park, but um, often a bird people want to see. They're much more common. I mean, when we go to Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, they seem to be all over the place. Sometimes in Kruger, they're not that common, but on our trips throughout the park, we do get them. I also just wanted to... Uh, Put this in, you can see this bird has actually got a tag, P063. There is a research program going on in the Kruger National Park and in South Africa, some of our large stalks like this, or saddleable stalks, and then our vultures as well, where they're wing tagged by Endangered Wildlife Trust. And I just urge, if anyone is in the park or out birding, and you see tagged big birds like this, tagged eagles, vultures, stalks, etc., please try and get a photo of the bird and the tag. 
then you can report that tag to the guys at the Endangered Wildlife Trust or to Andre Boerter and them. It just um, helps them with their research to understand how these birds are moving, where they move, and through that we can better protect them. If You can also report them to Safring on the Safring website as well. The marabou stalks feed on carrion, so they do uh, face the same threats as what the vultures do. What's happening is um, people are, um, as you've heard me say with your vultures, with the poaching that's going on, the poachers will go and now lay a carcass full of poison to kill vultures, because they know the vultures are showing anti-poaching teams where there's been a poaching incident. And because marabou stalks also will come down and feed on carrion, it is affecting them, it is killing them. And all these birds have got their role to play within the ecosystem and in the environment. This is the, the causeway, just to give you a typical scene. And this is taken uh, actually just in the beginning of this year. We've had some really, really good rain. And uh, you can see the water coming over the causeway, and there must be little, little fish actually coming down the river. And this attracted the birds in. And it's a typical scene you can get in the Shinkweti River on the low, on the causeways. This is actually in front of the camp, the yellow bull stalk, hummocorp, and a little egret in the background. It's just a beautiful scene, and you can just watch the birds get some really good photos, get up close and personal with them. Some of the other top birds that we do get around the Shungreti area, around the camp, along the river, and then heading slightly north, things like Shikra, small accipiter, a bird with a bright red eye, sandpiper, as you heard me say, and your uh, waders, very, very good in front of the river. Um, little stint, black wing stilt, the camp is full of starlings, both virtual starlings, cape starlings. Retsis helmet shrike is also a bird that on a couple of occasions I've seen in and around the camp, and the southern ground hornbills also seems to spend, spend some time in a thick riverine bush around the camp. Um, the area around Shingweti has also got some fantastic wildlife. Um, that's one of the benefits of spending time in the north on a birding and a wildlife trip is, people often say the north doesn't have a lot of wildlife. The north has got a lot of wildlife in it. The road network's just not so big, but one of the benefits of being in the north when it comes to wildlife is if you come to that cheetah sighting, that lion sighting, leopard, etc., often you're going to be the only car or one or two, three cars around, and you can really enjoy the sighting. And sometimes you can spend, I mean, around Shinguetsi, the S56 that runs uh, the Mapojo Loop that runs along that river is probably my favorite road in the cruiser. It's the best lion sighting I've had in my career. I had only over 50 lions. And we were two cars. I spent over two hours with these lions. And they were cubs. They were playing. They were actually on a kill. So they are taking on a buffalo. And the cubs were playing after feeding. So that's what I always tell people. The great thing about the north is there's not lots of people around. And you really get fantastic sceneries, big elephant bulls, big herds of buffalo. Really, the north has got a lot to offer. Scenes like this at the artificial water holes, which are controversial. A lot of them have now been shut and closed down. Um, they say the, the reason behind this is with the introduction of water into the north, which is typically more dry, it has moved game around and game has moved in what wasn't there necessarily before. And it has, an, it has had an impact on some of the other species, mainly your rare antelope, like the sable and the rowan. Because we introduced water into the north in the late, in the early 70s, this attracted your big herds of zebra and wildebeest, and the lions followed them. And your rare antelope like sable and rowan don't really do well in an area with a high carnival and um, with a high number, high number of lions. So there is some controversy around them, but some of the water holes are still active and we get beautiful scenes like this. Just another typical scene going along the Shingweti River um, south of the camp. There you can see yellow bolt stalk, Goliath heron, largest heron in, in the world, gray heron, and look all the way towards the left. You've got a black heron sitting there. It is also one of those birds, it's always a good bird to see in Kruger, especially if you can get them fishing when they go out and then they lift up their wings like that and, and, and get the fish to come and the way they hunt. It's always a, a real amazing thing to see. As I told you, carnivores are definitely up in the north and sometimes you get fantastic sightings like this. This was a young female leopard that I actually photographed just south of Shingretsi camp on one of my last trips up to the north. Beautiful lions. This was taken at that sighting that I was telling you about, where we had over 50 lions on one sighting. The most lions I've ever seen in one go in Southern Africa. Absolutely incredible. Very, very handsome. You can see an old male here with all these battle wounds around the face. What really attracts me to the north and what I like about the north, apart from the fantastic birding, are elephants. We have some, the tuskers are more common up in northern Kruger and really get to see some incredible big elephants with their big tusks and most of the elephants um, 
where the scenery and the open scenery just makes for fantastic photography and it's just they're always special to see these big gentle giants. Then the wild dogs. The wild dogs are up in northern Kruger. So they've actually just in the Endangered Wildlife Trust, Grant Beverly and his team have, um, well not recently, about two years ago, introduced the wild dogs into northern Kruger Park in the Shingwetsi area. The Boma is actually near Shingwetsi and often around Shingwetsi. At the airstrip, uh, just before you come into the camp, I often have go bumped into the wild dogs there early morning, late in the afternoon. And I've recently seen people with uh, great sightings of wild dogs up near Punda Maria. So the wild dogs, have, there has been a lot of reintroduction and Endangered Wildlife Trust is doing great conservation work with our wild dogs. And we're starting to see them doing quite well up in Northern Kruger as well. And then this is uh, coming off that, uh, coming off the S56 close to Babalala picnic spot. And it's just a big herd of buffalo enjoying a good mud waller there. And it's just another one of those typical wonderful scenes that we get up in, in Northern Kruger. It's always amazing when you see the big buffalo herds and they're crossing the roads. And when you look to the right, to the east, to the west, which as far as you can see, there's a straight long line of buffalo walking. It's always, always great and always exciting to see. Okay, as we're now heading more north, uh, this, is a becomes, this bird becomes a bit more common in Northern Kruger. It's our broad billed roller. One of my favorite rollers to see with their bright yellow bill like that. And this bird in Northern Kruger, I mean, it is a migrant, so it's only going to be here in our summer. And generally the birds are far more common in Northern Kruger. The other rollers we get th throughout uh, the park is of course your lilac breasted roller, your purple roller, your European roller in summer. So our summer visitor, visitor all the way from Europe, from Spain and Portugal. Incredible migration that bird takes place. And then later on in this tour, just north of the uh, Hugo Bridge, We'll see, I'm going to be telling you where we go and look for the prismatic and well sought of the racket-tailed roller. And this is always a special bird. I'm always in love with our helmet shrikes. These are your Retz's helmet shrike. Also, I seem to find them more common in the north. They're actually often in Punda Maria Rest Camp. And when I think Retz's helmet shrike, apart from them being so beautiful, I think thick-billed cuckoo. Because your Retz's helmet shrike or your, is the host. So thick-billed cuckoo. And there you can see the thick-billed cuckoo over there. That is one of the sort of the birds we try and target in more northern Kruger. You've heard me say in my tour of southern Kruger, we do get them in Bergendal Rest Camp or Bergendal Rest Camp. But up in the north, thick-billed cuckoo, your chances are much better for this species. The species is um, found uh, in Pundamere Rest Camp in summer. You'll often hear the bird calling. And then up, even up when you're along the Lovubu River around Pafui picnic site and heading to Crook's Corner. Always a special bird to see anywhere in Africa. Even when we're more north, up in the tropics, Uganda, uh, East Africa, across to West Africa on our birding tours there, when we get this cow here that call, it's always a bird that makes us very exciting. It is a brood parasite, so you hear me say it relies on a thick billed cuckoo as a host. And this bird will actually remove the host eggs. So it actually take the eggs throw the eggs out of the nest of the Retsus helmet truck and then lay its egg in the nest and then let the Retsus helmet truck bring up the chicks. Also a bird which is quite common along our main rivers up uh, towards Shingwetsi, this was taken along the Levugu River, is your giant eagle owl, or it was a Faroe's eagle owl with their beautiful pink eyelids. This bird actually was feeding. He actually tried to catch, uh, I think it was a spurfer. Late afternoon mist and then posed actually on the, at eye level like this on a stump and we managed to get some great photos of the species. And then you're beautiful again. You keep telling me how I keep telling you how you get these beautiful scenes like this in northern Kruger. And this is at the waterhole, which is just just before you arrive at uh, Babalala picnic site. And sometimes you get lucky like this. You have herds of buffalo coming in, elephants coming in, they mix like this, and you can just sit there enjoying a cup of coffee or just taking it all in, really experiencing what happens. You know, when the buffalo and the elephant are not there, the water holes, people say, are then boring. Not if you're a birder. You often, if you scan around the water holes, you'll see a lot of your smaller birds in things like your black eared sparrow larks, uh, cutthroat finches, your pytilias, your canaries, etc. coming in to drink. When it's burnt and open like that, we're always looking for Caspian plover. We're always looking for your Wrong's wing course or your Temenix course of things like that. And then 
up off and around the uh, Shingo, driving from Shingwezi and then up to Babala, the picnic spot is one of the better places, in my opinion, actually one of the best places in the Kruger National Park to see your rowan antelope. I'm always, you heard me say Tropic of Capricorn around Mopani is also good for them. But I often find there's often, a, there's a herd that hangs around that area around the Babalala picnic site. And I always tell people, keep your eyes, be on a lookout around there, even on the dirt road, going from the picnic site back down towards Chinguetzi. That area can be also very, very good for the rowan antelope. And then also sable antelope is also much more common in that area as well. So these are the two more rare antelopes of Kruger National Park. And when you're in the northern areas between Shingwetzi driving up to Punimuria, always best to keep your your eyes and your ears, more your eyes in this case, more open for the species. Okay, that's Bob. Welcome to Babalana Picnic Spot. Uh, it's a top place to go and spend. Uh, often by the time the, by the time we're approaching here, a much needed bathroom break. So it's a good spot for a bathroom. You can hire a squattle. And you can have a breakfast there, enjoy a good cup of coffee, stretch your legs. You can see that big sycamore thing right in the middle of the picnic site. Spend some time looking. There's often different uh, array of birds in there. And then in front of the camp, yeah, in front of the picnic site, also got some really good birding. And then just to the right, there is that little water, that water hole I showed you where I had that photo of the buffalo and the elephants. I know there are sightings in front of Babalala when the conditions are right of black cuckoo in the long reeds in front of the picnic site. Oh, yeah, of course, inside the picnic site, there's also this resident barn owl that is resident in the picnic site. If you approach the picnic site and look all the way towards the left, you'll see in one of the trees, there's this big nest from a hammercock. If you look inside the nest, you can see there the barn owl is sitting there. So it's, always, it's always nice seeing these barn owls and seeing owls during the day on a day roost, or if you know where they're roosting like this in this species, always good seeing them. And our dusky lark. These dusky larks are also migrants, so visitors to um, South Africa and Kruger in summer. And the north, the north, the north is much more common for them. And uh, when we're there in summer, the open areas as you're driving from Babalala towards Punta Maria, it's always worth scanning the open areas and keeping your eyes out and the watch out for uh, these beautiful larks, these uh, dusky larks. They're migrants from Central and East Africa, so from uh, Western Angola, Central Africa, Congo, and then Kenya, Tanzania, and they come down to us in the summer. When we do our trips in Kenya, Tanzania, this is a, quite a common bird to come across. Other good larks you get in the area, this is red cap lark. These, these guys, much as you can see, they prefer those open areas we get when you're driving uh, north from Shingwetzi to Punta Maria, and then your Sabota lark as well. This Sabota lark, always tell people, it's quite an, an easy bird to know. It's a lark while you're driving and often flush off the road and then sit up on the top of the tree and they've got a very, very distinct call when they call as well. In the area, whenever you're driving in Northern Crew and these open areas can be very, very good for raptors on the wing and then sometimes perch like this tawny eagle as well. Very, very good for our martial eagle, especially along the river. And then things like your African hawk eagle. Always keep a lookout in summer for your harriers, montagues and pallet harrier. And um, some of the other um, migrant eagles that come in, things like your lesser spotted eagle, booted eagle, step eagle, Wahlberg's eagle. I seem to find the lesser spotted eagles often around Shingwetzi. It's quite, quite a good area for them. There's been, over the years, a pair that seems to build a nest in those first thick trees as you come from the bridge towards the camp. So, and if the quilias are there, the red bolt quilias are breeding, and there's good numbers of red bolt quilias, this also attracts the raptors in. You can see a martial eagle. I've just included this photo as well. There you can see, again, I'll speak about the rings. You can see the bird is ringed, the silver ring on the left foot, and then the red and the yellow on the right foot. Please, if you see these ringed birds in the Kruger National Park or anywhere on your birding trips, report them to the guys at the Endangered Wildlife Trust. If it's in Kruger, to the Marshall Eagle Research Project ongoing in the Kruger National Park, both of them you can find details on the internet and even on Facebook. And it just helps the guys better understand these birds and better protect them. It's always special seeing martial eagle close like that. Fantastic bird. And then, yeah, this is definitely one of the sought after birds of any birding trip to uh, Kruger. This is your Cory Bustard, one of the world's largest flying birds. Males can weigh over 12 kilograms, females about 6 kilograms. It's quite amazing to think that a bird can fly. Um, they're quite common um, in the central areas, the open grasslands, are, that's what the, the, the bird is, a grassland specialist. 
and then these open grasslands around Mopani and then going up from Shingweti to Punamir can be very, very good for Cory Busted. And then, of course, the other great bird that is sought after is your secretary bird. Secretary bird, I seem to have much better luck up in the northern parts of the Kruger. When you leave Kupafontaine Dam, before you join back onto the tar going up to uh, Pafruri, it is often an area we come across secretary bird. The guys at Bird Life South Africa, my good friend Melissa White, White Hart, Melissa is doing fantastic work with uh, protecting our secretary birds. These birds are endangered, main threat facing them is habitat loss. So a lot of habitat has been cleared for agriculture and that natural grassland has been lost for these birds. So there's a lot of work being done to try and protect these birds. Very charismatic birds. It's absolutely amazing to watch this bird when it hunts. It does favor and feed on snakes. And you see how those legs move like a, like, a, like a soccer player I wish he could move. And you see them doing that stepping. And that's how they'll kill the snake, kill the prey. They will feed on locusts, grasshoppers, etc. The prey is quite a, quite a big variety in prey. And then you heard me say, the charismatic southern ground hornbill is found throughout the Kruger Park. And northern Kruger Park is also very good for the species. This bird needs, our, needs all the conservation efforts it can, it can get, all the protection it can get. The bird is critically endangered. And the, um, these guys, I mean, they are habitat loss, like with most things, is one of the main threats facing them. In our national parks like Kruger, unfortunately, because we've got a very good elephant population, these birds will look for a, a cavity in a tree and they'll nest in, in that cavity. And now nesting sites have been, they often use the same nesting site. And these nesting sites are being lost by the elephants pushing the trees over. They don't help themselves. You know, these birds are monogamous. So they will um, form a pair bond that will last for, li for life. And that female, she will only lay two eggs every eight to nine years of her life. And of those two eggs, one will only survive. They practice what we call siblicide, like Cain and Abel. So the first egg is laid. A few days later, that second egg is laid. And that second egg, it is basically just a backup for the first egg. So you can imagine that doesn't really help the species neither. But um, it's done for a reason. I mean, a lot of our large raptors will do this kind of behavior as well. So there's a lot of work being done with the ground hornbills in Kruger. Mabula ground hornbill project is involved. And there are some artificial nests that have been introduced into some of the private reserves that are open to Kruger. And we're starting to see the numbers come up. Uh, please, again, if you see any ringed birds, just report them through to the guys at the Endangered Wildlife Trust or to uh, bird life South Africa. So you can see buffalo crossing the road. That's what I was talking to. It's a typical scene as you're heading up north, you get these large herds of buffalo that, that cross and will come across the road like that. And if you look on the back there, you can see those oxpeckers sitting on the back. There we've got red-billed oxpecker and yellow-billed oxpecker. The yellow-billed oxpecker becomes much more common in Northern Kruger Park. It is quite amazing with these guys. These birds were almost extinct in the 60s and the 70s. We we're actually looking at reintroducing these birds into the Kruger Park and they started seeing sightings. And then they, we realized through research and through doing work that um, with the outbreak of the rinderpest, the way that they were dipping the cattle outside the Kruger Park, the dips they were using were having a negative effect on the, on the ox peckers. So that a lot of work was done to change the dips that they were using for cattle, for the cattle, and uh, now the bird is the, these birds are doing incredibly well. We're actually seeing the yellow bull ox pickers make a wonderful range expansion down into southern Kruger. I was actually in Kruger last week on a birding trip. Now the park is open for self drive, and we actually had them right down in southern Kruger. So, uh, yeah, it's one of the success stories these yellow bull ox pickers. Ah, back to our. Uh, things that can eat us, but some of the other sort of the things in the Kruger Park, beautiful leopard sighting. So this leopard I actually had out right outside Punda Maria last year on a birding trip, just sitting there next to the road. This, thing, this leopard was literally about 200 meters from the entrance gates to Punda Maria. So when people say there's no wildlife enough up in the north, it's not true. I've had some of my best lion and leopard sightings up in northern Kruger National Park. And I mean, our birding tours, our nature travel birding tours, we specialize in, often in trying to show people as many birds as possible, but we enjoy everything the environment has to offer. And it's always special when you're alone and you get to enjoy this spectacular carnival, a spectacular map. Again, buffalo, I just uh, like this photo because you can see that yellow bird ox pick in the middle of the head. And we get some really, really big buffalo bulls. 
up in uh, Kruger. You can see it in the background. That is a typical Mupani felt like that. Okay, around Puna Maria was well, one of the antelope, one of the small antelope you can see around Puna Maria is um, this little guy. When we are spending time, especially around um, Mahoney Loop, we are often looking for this small antelope. This is a sharp book. When you're on Mahoney Loop, when you drive the loop slowly, often the sharp book is an antelope you can come across. And in, in, in my opinion, it is the best place in the Kruger Park to see the antelope. And then a night drive around Punda Maria will often yield the spring air. We call it the uh, Kruger, the Kruger, the Krugeroo, Kruger Park Kangaroo. With a hop around exactly, it looks like a small kangaroo. What's really interesting for me is you only find these, these uh, mammals in Northern Kruger. I mean, from Shingwetsi upwards, but really Punda Maria on a night drive, you're going to see 10, 20 of these things. Anywhere else in Kruger Park, they're actually very, very, come, very, very rare to come across. So it's worth doing a night drive around Punda Maria, find some of the nocturnal things. And then as we all know, the pennant wing nightjar is famous around uh, Punda Maria. And often coming back from that as it's got dark, you'll see our spring hares or our Krugeroos running around. So we're off to Punda Maria, one of the original campsites in the Kruger National Park. And it is still kept its original charm. So we decided to leave this camp originally how it was built, how the huts were built, and I've just refurbished the huts inside. So it's quite an, it's quite nice. It throws you back to what the Kruger Park used to be in the early days. It's um, it's the most northerly camp in the Kruger National Park. And the theory where the name comes Punda Maria, where it comes from, it's for, it's a Swahili name for zebra, Punda Malia, meaning striped donkey. And one of the first rangers in the area, his his wife's name was Maria. And she was very fond of wearing striped dresses. And that's a, the, the theory how the camp got, the combination of those two things has led to how the camp got its, got its, na got its name. The camp has got really, really good birding in it. So you've got um, uh, the flycatcher trail runs through the camp. So that's got some really good birding in it. And the camp is on a ridge. So often in the heat of the day, you get the birds riding the thermal very, very nicely, offering some great birding. Okay, we're on our way to, we're on now just outside Puna Maria and we're starting to make our way around Mahoney Loop. It's a fantastic um, area of Kruger Park. Some of the some great birding is available on this loop. Well worth driving this loop slowly and just taking it easy, enjoying the scenery, fantastic big trees and the birding and the wildlife that is on offer. Often on Mahoney Loop is a part of lion to spend time on the, on the loop. So keep your eyes out there's not to be looking for everything while we're driving around here beautiful big baobabs famous of northern kruger park so this is sunset from the honey loop on the way to look for the pennant wing nitros you get your special special sightings you can see the big buffalo weaver nests and often around the buff uh, often around these big baobabs you'll get things like mosque swallows and the red-headed weavers and some that's just a scene from in front of the camp. And the camp has got a water hole in front of it. And then game will come throughout the day. So even when you're taking a siesta or taking a break in the camp in the heat of the day, well worth checking the water hole for mammals coming down to drink. And then even birds as well. You can see the saddle stalk in front of the zebra. Well, the camp itself, that you heard me say, has got some exceptionally great birding in it. One of the birds that is common in Puna Maria's camp, Puna Maria Res camp, sorry is this eastern Nikoto, often around the swimming pool area. If you just look around then in the campsite, you can, you'll hear this bird, and you often you can get very close and get some great photos of this special bird. Crested guinea fowl, our Bob Marley. We've got that cool, funky hairstyle. These birds are resident in the camp. Uh, a walk around the camp, again, around the swimming pool in the campsite, or towards the new safari tents will yield you great sightings of our crested guinea fowl. In my place, it's the place to see the bird in uh, Kruger and get them on your Kruger lists. Trumpet or hornbill come into the camp in summer to feed on the pigs, so you often hear them vocalizing. And if you walk around and, and look, you will get great views on them. Bearded scrub robin is also a, a regular bird in the camp. More towards the picnic site, if you head as you come in towards the, if you walk from the swimming pool towards the petrol station and that area of the picnic site, often in a thick vegetation, you get them running around running around and your terrestrial brown bulls also will often associate with them. Green-winged pytelia is common in the camp as well and always be on the lookout for the orange-winged pytelia. 
his orange ring by Tilly has spent uh, last year spent a, quite a bit of time in Punemaria race camp. At the top, there opposite where the rooms are, you can see the picture I showed you. You'll see that little bird box just next to the laundry. And that's where the orange wing pitillias will come in. So whenever you're around Puna Maria and you see pitillias, just check for your orange wing pitillias as well. All right, there's your terrestrial brown bulls. You heard me say we often get them in the camp as well. And then the, around that water, you heard me say around that water bath as well. Your smaller birds will come in like these African fire finches. Your grey-headed bushwhack, your squirkful is also a common bird on the flycatcher trail in summer African paradise flycatcher. is also quite common on that trail. I once on a trip, I was actually um, not on a I was there privately and we'd gone down to the swimming pool just to have a dip. It was very hot, it was in December. And it's just as we had come in, came into camp, got the gates closing, so the sun had just set, it was just at dusk. And we had a bat hawk zooming by, trying to catch the bats that come out of the big, big trees. So also keep an eye out for bat hawk around Punamaria Race Camp. And then it's just to uh, give you an idea of the area around uh, Puna Maria. This is on the other end, the western end of Mahoney Loop, and some of your thicker vegetation that is in the area. And that is what attracts some of the great birds into this area. And that is your Mahoney that is heading north on Mahoney Loop as you've gone around the loop with a camp to your back. You've heard me mention pen and ring nightjar. When people think of Puna Maria and they think of Mahoney Loop, Pen and ring night jar generally comes to mind. It's probably the best place in South Africa and in Kruger to see the species. You heard me mention the R sightings that come from Southern Kruger around Pretoria Scorp in the Inkambeni concession. But this is probably the most accessible. In our summer months, so from about November through to January, February is best for them when the males have got their long pennants like this. And you can book the sunset drive. On Punta Maria, let them know you're interested in the pen and wing night jar and they'll take you to the place where they are and you'll sit there and you wait for them to come out Then they'll come out and they'll display you get fantastic views on the sort of the species. Oh, that pinna wing nightjar is an inter-African migrant. So they're only going to be with us here in the summer. They come down, it's a migrant, they come down from Kenya, Nigeria and spend the summer here with us. Another sort of the bird in northern Kruger, often around Puna Maria and the big green trees are these grey-headed parrots. The other, noun is a, the other name is a brown neck parrot. They're much more common in the north. So Puna Maria area going up towards Pafuri and even on the Nyala Loop, which is just south of the Vuru Bridge, you get across these birds. Very, very vocal birds. You'll often hear them before you see them. Our gray-headed kingfisher. This is also, it's a, it's a migrant, an inter-African migrant, comes, spends time with us in the summer and they are far more common in northern Korea. I've often had them on Mahoney Loop and then going up towards uh, Kafuri. One of the sort of the birds for the Mahoney loop, this is your white-breasted cuckoo shrike. Not every time I do the loop, I get the bird. It's not, a, it's not an easy bird to, to get, but there are, the Mahoney loop is probably, in my opinion, the best place in Kruger to see the bird. And it's always worth driving the loops slowly and trying to listen for their call that they do. It's very important to know the call of this bird. It's a very faint call. When you pick up on the, if you hear that bird calling, switch off the car, listen. Often how you get onto the species. Often also around the area, we get African harrier hawk. This used to be known as a gymnogene for my South African uh, friends. And it's quite interesting. If you look at this bird, you can see it's got that red face. When you look in the bird books, often they've got a yellow face. They can actually change their face, the, the, the color of their face, depending on if they're getting stressed, agitated, aggravated, etc. So faces might even mostly yellow, but when they get stressed, aggravated, excited, it will go pink, red in color like this. And this bird is very, very unique in the sense is that you'll often see them pulling out chicks of little birds from holes in the tree or your weaver birds. They're actually able to hang there on the bottom of the, of the weaver nest from one leg and take the other leg and they've got very, very long legs and they'll actually stick it into the weaver bird nest and pull the chicks out. I've seen them hanging on trees as well and they'll be sticking the leg into a hole in the tree to try and pull the chicks out of the drongos, the flycatchers, etc. So often if you see the birds very upset and the birds are mobbing, if it's not an owl, then it is often African harrier or, or gymnogy, they're mobbing. It is our white-headed vulture. You heard me say in front of Puna Maria, it's on the hill. So often you get, um, in the, as it warms up and the thermals, the birds start to ride the thermals, 
can be very, very good for raptors, vultures, etc. And the area in the north, because it's nice and open, sometimes you get your bird, your vultures perched like this, and you get great views on uh, on our vultures and our uh, raptors. Things like brooded eagle, much more common in the north. And if you're very lucky and you have rain, and then you get your termites emerging out, often these birds will come down onto the ground and they'll feed on the ground. For them, the less spotted eagles. I've done a night drive from Tundamalu when this has happened, and then your big bullfrogs are out feeding on the termites. We had, yeah, everything just seems to feed on these termites. So it's an important thing that takes place in the summer. I always tell people, if you're in northern Kruger Expression and it starts to rain, get out there, wait for the rain to stop. If the termites come out, you're going to have some exceptionally bird, great birdie. Sorry, it's not a very good picture, but another bird that is really good or really common up in northern Kruger is your Eurasian golden oriole. Um, a winter, a summer visitor from Europe, and you can see they've got all that black in the wing like that. The common oriole is the black-headed oriole with the all black head, and then in summer from our inter-African migrant is your African golden oriole. But it doesn't have a full black wing. An African cuckoo, another one of the summer visitors to Kruger National Park, the whole of the Kruger National Park, but much more common up in the north. In summer, driving to the Kruger Park, you must be on the lookout for all of our cuckoo. African cuckoo, La Valence, greater spotted uh, Jacobin cuckoo, and even sometimes your, your, your common or your European cuckoo as well. And then, of course, you've seen me before. I've shown you the photos of the thick billed cuckoo as well. Uh, as I was saying, there you can see your great spotted cuckoo. Also, a fantastic bird to see. Much more common up in Northern Kruger Park in our summer. Okay, one of the sort of the birds around Puna Maria Camp, apart from ones I've touched on here, is your honored chat. This bird is a special bird to see in South Africa, Southern Africa, and in the Kruger National Park. And there's a couple of places that are really, really good to see these birds. So the bird is very, very common. Uh, well, not very common, but is seen. I always seem to have great luck finding this bird when you leave uh, Punda Maria and you drive on the Kloppofontein dirt road. At about between 10 and 15 kilometers, when you get to the very mature and thick Mopanis, it's always good looking out for this bird there, listening for the call, even trying to call the bird in. The other area we get them is if you can continue on the tar road and you get to the junction. If you go right, you'll go to the gate, Puna Maria Gate. And if you go left, you're heading now back down towards Shingweti. If you go left and you drive for about anything between three and seven kilometers, that area is also very, very good for the species. It's very, very important to know their call and to be responsive to their call. So if you listen, often the birds will be calling in summer. Or if you play the course once or twice, sometimes the birds will come in for the call. The call is very, very important. The other place we do get them as well is north of the Lavuvu Bridge when we're looking for the racket-tailed roller as well. Another good bird as we're now heading on the on the dirt road towards Kloppofontein Dam, the Kloppofontein dirt road towards Pafuri, and um, this black-bellied bustard or Kohan. As you get to the more open areas before Kloppofontein Dam itself, this bird becomes uh, a lot more common. And then you can see also the monotonous lark in summer, very, very common in the grasslands around Kloppofontein. Very, very distinct call. It sounds like they're going, purple jeep, purple jeep, purple jeep. And it is a very common bird, only in our summer months. In the winter months, you won't hear them. Timonix Corsa, that area is also very, very good for them, especially if the grass is short or the area has recently been burnt. The Timonix Corsa often get them actually at Top of Fontaine Dam itself and then just as you're leaving the dam in those open vegetated areas there. That is just a typical scene of Top of Fontaine Dam. Yeah, we were lucky one day on a burning trip getting there. Kind of this is coming back in the afternoon from Pafruri, we went towards Top of Fontaine Dam and a whole big herd of buffalo that come into the dam. You could see some actually there in the water. Because the, this is one of the, before you actually get to the Lavuvu area, this area of the park, this has got a good amount of water in it. Because it's got water, you can imagine it attracts your buffalo and often there's also lion in the area. Quite often on our birding tours, I always will take Club to Fontaine and we do come across lion in the area from time to time as well. Another viewpoint, you can see the artificial water holes there. The small one for the, the common game and the big circular cement tank is the water hole for our elephants to drink. 
One of the special birds to always keep an eye out and to try and get around Klopperfontein Dam at the dam itself and in that area is your Dickinson's Kestrel. It is often, often reported from the Klopperfontein Dam area. So just watch for the bird. It is a very, very special bird to see anywhere in Southern Africa. So it's a, it's a great bird to be lucky enough to see the bird in the area. It's great. It's not there every time, but quite often on trips when I've been in the area, I've come across Dickinson's Kestrel. Fantastic species. Black-chested snake eagle is also much more common up in northern Kruger, along with the brown snake eagle common throughout the park. The difference is you can see this bird has only got the black chest and then the white going all the way down. And then also a special bird uh, at any time to see is your black kugel when conditions are right. So in our summer months, January, February, after good rain and the grass is long, as you come from the Kruppelfontein dirt road and you come onto the tar road now heading towards the Vuvu Bridge and Fufuri, you'll get a water hole there. And at that water hole, Mashikiri water hole, that area is often very, very, very good for black kukul. Sometimes you'll only hear them calling, you have to try and call them out, or some maybe sit there patiently for a while, the birds might come out. More common early in the morning, as it gets warm, the birds then go down into the grass, difficult to see. The other bird that I've had there on occasion from time to time when conditions are right, are your dwarf bitterns. It's the smallest bitten, and it is a summer visitor. But check for dwarf birds in an area where areas where there's water and there's always thick vegetation because these birds are very sporadic and they can literally show up anywhere in the Kruger National Park. And even Allen's Gallinule. I haven't had Allen's Gallinule there before, but I know of, I know people that I can trust that have had sightings of Allen's Gallinule. Again, a bird that will come into Kruger when conditions are right and could actually show up anywhere where the conditions are right. So thick vegetation, often around the water. Okay, we're making our way now to one of the most famous areas and one of my favorite, favorite parts of Kruger National Park. That is the Levuvu Bridge over the Levuvu River. Some great, fantastic birding that is found in, in, in this area of the Kruger National Park and from this bridge. And uh, there you can see the view out of our cars on the bridge looking towards Bufuri picnic spot just there around the corner of the Levuvu River. Probably this bridge is famous for this pals fishing out. Now it's difficult to see during the day because you can imagine the owl goes into thickets, you cannot see it, but always scan the trees right and left of the bridge. But if you're lucky enough and you spend time in the Makuleke uh, concession at, at uh, Return Africa's Lodge, this bird, if you go there in the, in the late afternoon for sundowners, the bird comes out and you get fantastic views of this pals fishing owl. The bird is seen all along the road. So it's been seen on Inyala Drive as well. And it's been seen all along the dirt road driving to Pafuri Picnic Site and from Pafuri Picnic Site to Crook's Corner as well. I always speak to the, um, the caretaker at Pafuri Picnic Site. Often they have an idea where the birds have been seen and they can help you. Another great bird to see from there is your white crowned lapwing. They often are down in the river on either side of the bridge. And it's always a good bird to see because these birds actually have a, a limited distribution in South Africa. They're common along our main rivers in the Kruger Park, the Olifants, the Litaba, the Levuvu, and then down along the Sabi River in the south. Green sandpiper has also been seen from time to time. It gets reported almost every year from the Levuvu Bridge in summer, and that is a rarity for us in South Africa. And then black stork. These birds are critically endangered, and these birds breed in the Levuvu Gorge. So it's a very, very good bird to keep an eye out for. Quite often, they'll also be down in the river feeding or look up on the cliff faces. When you're on the Nyala Loop, you can sometimes see them on their nests or, in, or when they're flying. Saddlebolt stalk, also very, very common in the Levuvu River. Driving along the river, check the loops, go down to the loops. Often you'll come across saddlebolt stalk or also very good for your smaller birds, your smaller waders, your other herons, your other egrets kingfishers, bee eaters, broad-billed roller, some of your indigo birds, purple indigo bird, very, very good, barbets, etc. We're watching for crown eagle, trumpet or hornbill. These birds are all quite common along the, or not common, but are along the Lavuvu River. Fantastic. Always great birds to see up close and personal, your beautiful yellow stalk. A battalia eagle, the area, I mean, this bird we find throughout the Kruger National Park, but I always seem to have great luck approaching the Vuvu or driving a little Vuvu area. The bateliers seem to quite like the area as well. Sometimes we get lucky, you can get this bird on the ground and you can really appreciate the beauty of this eagle. 
you heard me say crowned eagle. This is a young bird. And I took this photo actually just north of Le Vouvre Bridge going towards Bafuri Gate. But crowned eagle, the, the northern parts, the Le Vouvre area along the Le Vouvre River and going to Bafuri Picnic Spot is the best place in the Kruger Park to connect with crowned eagle. Neve Starling. So as we head up into northern Kruger around Punda Maria, coming north from Shungwetsi and then around Bafuri Picnic Spot, the most common starling you're going to get in this area is your Neve Starling. Black eye like your virtual starling, but you can see that very, very, very long tail like that. That is distinctive of this species, and they become very, very common in northern Kruger. And the other bird to look out for in when you're spending time around the uh, Le area, and the best place is to drive on that Inyala loop. So just south of the bridge, you've got the turning to, if you're coming now from Punta Maria, the turning to the right to uh, Pafuri picnic site. And you'll see there's a turning to the left called Inyala Drive. And that goes to the Vuvu Gorge and the Rose or the Black Eagles breed there. And it's a very, very good area. It's one of the best areas in the park to see the Rose or Black Eagles. White storks or your European storks, storks that bring the babies. In our summer months, when you head up into northern Kruger, these birds can be there in very, very large numbers. And sometimes you can see hundreds of these birds on your open grass plains. And I've had great sightings of them often flying over the Lavuvu River. The burnt necked Eromomola. This is one of your, uh, it's much farther, prefers your much drier habits. And uh, that area driving up just before you get to the Lavuvu Bridge where it's quite open and dry. If you look in those acacias that line the road there, the species is very, very common there. And then north of the bridge heading uh, towards Pafuri Gate next to the road, the bird is often in the acacias, your knobthorn acacias next to the road. And then always keep an eye out for the other Eromomola in the area, your green-capped Eromomola. Also found in similar habitats in the same areas. And then I also know, um, often get them when I'm heading towards Crook's Corner, around the Crook's Corner area. Or if you come from Crook's Corner, heading back now towards the border post on that road over there, it can also be very, very good for this species. You heard me say purple indigo bird. This is a, one of the indigo birds to watch out for in northern Kruger. And I've often had great sightings of purple indigo birds when I'm driving on the dirt road from the tar road, heading towards Pafuri picnic spot. And the other small bird we're looking for in the area, sorry, it's not a great photo, is our lemon-breasted canaries. On a couple of occasions now recently, I've had them just south of the bridge. So if it's probably about 400 meters south, of the turning of the dirt road turning to go to Pafuri picnic site, you'll see there's often pools of water that gather there and the lemon breasted canaries come in to drink. I know people have had sightings from them at the bridge itself coming in to drink from the small pools and then even near the Crook's Corner area as well. Ah, I mean one of the most famous birds. This bird can send you on a, can be a real nightmare, it can, see, can also send you on a real run around. But when people talk of the Lavuvu Bridge and then going just slightly north of the bridge, automatically three banded Corsa comes to mind. It's one of the top birds to see in this area. And you just have to drive really, really slowly, have a lot of luck on your side and just scan the gravel plains. Often if it's warm, they're going to be in the shade underneath the logs, the bushes, etc. So you really need to look early morning. You sometimes get them out like this. And um, there's different marks. I always tell, I always find the best place of relocating the bird is anything between 400 and 700 meters north of the Lavuvu Bridge. Just drive slowly up to one kilometer and just keep looking for this piece. And then you heard me say, this bird is uh, one of the sought after birds when we're spending our uh, time up in the north. This is your racket-tailed roller. I always manage to get this bird when I'm on the trips up there. Quite far north of the Lavuvu Bridge, there are different spots you can start to check. I always get them anywhere between 13 and 15 kilometers from the bridge heading to Pafuri Gate. But they can really be seen anywhere. And there's, you'll see the different markers along the road. So try at the 8, the 13, and the 15 kilometer markers. It is crucial to know the call of this bird. If you hear the bird calling in the thick Mopani, then you can often locate the bird. The birds do respond to call, but you do not want to overplay them. So please be responsible for the call. What I do is I try to listen. If I pick up the call, then I'll just play the call once. And often that will bring the birds in. But drive slowly and just scan, watching for the rollers moving in the 
Okay, this is your Pafuru picnic spot. It's one of the most incredible picnic uh, areas in Kruger National Park. It's right on the Lavuru River and it's in this thick riverine uh, vegetation. It's got some exceptionally great birding in the actual picnic spot. A lot of us local birders will remember the legendary Frank Mubasa who used to uh, manage the picnic site, but unfortunately he passed away. And I take my hat off to him. He, were, he actually was an incredible birder and really got involved and really loved these birds. And a lot of us, we can remember going there as kids and him showing us the black-throated wattle eye, the bone spine tails, telling us where the pals is. He was an incredible guy and did an incredible work. And we all, yeah, a great tribute to him. And he did the, he did the birding community in South Africa a, a lot of good. There's a new guy there that is actually quite good with his birds and is trying to follow in the steps of Frank. So chat to him. And he's also quite good and can let you know where things are in the, in the, in the picnic site and what has been seen in the area. Yeah, so one of the birds that is quite common in the picnic site around Pafuri and along the Lavubu River is your crowned hornbills. Very, very vocal birds. And often when I've been to the picnic site and you're having a coffee there or having lunch there, you'll hear the hornbills flying along the river or coming into the picnic site. And then you check on the fringe of the picnic site. You often manage to get good views of them. Narina trogon. It is the only place in the Kruger National Park where I have seen this species. I know there are reports of them at Litaba in the picnic site there, and then they have shown up in the nursery at Skukuza and in the Skukuza, uh, in the golf, near the golf club at the bird hide, and even in the Skukuza star village. But I've had sightings of the bird in uh, at Papuri picnic spot as well, and it's got a very distinct call very thick vegetation and you really need to scan. So again, speak to the attendants. They often know where they are or know about the species. Tropical bobo, very, very common uh, in the picnic spot in the thick bushes. You'll hear a very distinct call. You can often call them out. And um, driving along the river, you'll often see these birds. They're quite common. It becomes a com common bobo up in Northern Korea. And then one of the sought after birds to see in the Pafuri picnic site is your black-throated wattle eye. I've seen them once at the Tarba Rest Camp. Other than that, the only place I've seen them in, in, the, seen them in the Kruger Park is at the Pafuri picnic site. They often spend time on the eastern side of the camp near the bathrooms and towards the attendance accommodation in, the, in those thick bushes over there. If you go there and listen, you go there and look for them, you'll often, you'll often come across the species. When you're heading from the picnic site and you're heading towards uh, Crook's Corner, the area again, I often, I seem to, when I do the trips there and it's in summer, we always seem to get broad broad roller hanging around in that area. And that is the beautiful drive heading now from the free picnic site towards uh, the famous Crook's Corner and you drive in this fever tree forest. It is just absolutely spectacular. You've just got these fever trees growing everywhere and it's just a great drive. You know, you see the fever trees, the birds in and amongst them antelope walking through, if you're lucky, elephant walking through. And the antelope I often seem to find in the fever tree forest are you in Niala. Riverine antelope, they prefer the, they prefer the thick riverine vegetation and often driving from the Pafuri picnic site through to Cook's Corner, you come across these beautiful Niala antelope. Look down into the river, do the loops that go down into the river river. Some of the biggest crocodiles I've ever seen in the Kruger National Park are along the Lavuvu River and then the Limpopo River. Area is also very, very good for hippopotamus in the river. Buffalo coming down to drink, elephants coming down to drink. And then, of course, by checking the loops going down to the river, you can always enjoy some great water birds. Look for your giant kingfisher, pied kingfisher, malachite. I've had um, African pygmy kingfisher in that area as well. And also just keep an eye out um, in the overhanging trees quite close to the water. Look for your night herons. And then you heard me say, Pell's fishing owl is picked up quite regular, driving from the free picnic site up towards Crook's Corner. This is the typical scene we get um, up in the north. This is actually a, a herd of elephants crossing the Limpopo River. It's just, um, this was actually taken at Crook's Corner. It was taken in the late afternoon. We were actually staying at um, the Return Africa camp. So we could get to Crook's Corner in the late afternoon and just enjoy sunset there. We had these elephants crossing the Limpopo River from South Africa into Zimbabwe. There is the new Kruger Park or Sand Falks accommodation now open at the border, very close to the free border, the border camp. It used to be the old uh, 
ranger's hut and you can now rent out that accommodation and it's a good option because then you're very close to Crook's Corner and Pafuri and you can get there nice and early in the morning. But that's what being in the bush out and our birding is all about, is these spectacular scenes you can get. And then, yeah, that's the view at Crook's Corner. You can see um, that this was taken uh, last winter. The Mpopo River is low, it's just running down there in the front. So you can come here in summer and this river is that whole length. From where I'm standing, it took this photo to the other side is the river. So it's just a spectacular area. It's a famous area, Crook's Corner, where it gets the name from. It was where the three countries met, South Africa, uh, Zimbabwe, and um, Mozambique. And it apparently is where all the criminals in the early days, all the gold smugglers, all the elephant poachers used to run. And they used to cross the Limpopo and stand where the beacon is in the middle. And that's where the three countries met. And that was basically no man's land and no one could prosecute them, no one could get them. And that's where it got the, the nickname Crook's Corner from. It's an exceptionally beautiful area of the park, the whole area in Northern Kruger Park and this drive I've described coming up from Punta Maria to the Lavu Bridge, then to Pafuri Picnic Side, Crook's Corner, and then back down to Punta Maria or in that area. It's just a well worth an exceptional drive to do. And, and to, if you really want to get some of Kruger's great birds, this is the drive to do and to try and spend some time in the, in the Great North. Thank you very much, folks. I really hope you've enjoyed that uh, virtual birding tour of Northern Kruger. Thanks for tuning in and for joining me. And yeah, as you've, said, as you've heard me say, I've been doing a few of these birding virtual tours just to try and keep busy and to try and earn a bit of an income. So have a look at my YouTube channel. You'll see the other virtual tours are up there. The other Kruger virtual tours are up there as well. And uh, yeah, enjoy them. I hope I can, we can meet. Hopefully I can take you on a birding tour or taking our local tour here in South Africa at Kruger National Park and thank you very much for joining in. I've just posted up a couple of links there so you can uh, follow us, you can join us on Facebook, uh, Nature Travel Kruger, Nature Travel Birding and just my PayPal link there as well. So we meet again. Thank you folks and have a great day further. Bye now.